Welcome to the Shepherd's Heart, a series where we look at different leaders from the book of Judges and then try to learn from the positive of their lives, the not so positives from their lives, to become better leaders in our different spheres. Today we look at the life of Abimelech, the judge who succeeded his father Gideon. And today we want to look at comparative advantage. <laughs> when we look at society today, it's almost like as if it's a crime to have any comparative advantage when it comes to a leadership office. I want to argue from the Bible and from his life that it's really how you take this comparative advantage that makes you a good leader or a weak leader. So Abimelech is one of the sons of Gideon. And Gideon is his father and his mother is from an influential group. His mother is from a certain, you know, uh, not just influential in terms of decision making, but also the numbers. And if you look at politics uh, as an aspect of leadership, you know numbers are what speak. So here he is born in this situation where he has the comparative advantage of being a son of Gideon. But he has this overwhelming comparative advantage over all the other contenders because he is the one whose mother is from Shechem. And he goes and uh, does lobbying with the Shechemites and they come solidly behind him and he becomes the next leader after his dad. And so you may wonder, sometimes your leadership may be enhanced by some comparative advantage like you have, like Gideon. It may be, be enhanced because of uh, maybe you come from some social pedigree or maybe, so your name, when people say your name in town, you're known. Um, maybe you come from a, a, a background of resources, either your own or what in our country sometimes is referred to as old money. Or maybe it's because of the, the, the education you have. You have amassed certain, you know, level of, you know, certificates, degrees and diplomas that put you at a comparative advantage over others. Maybe... Um, it's one thing or the other. Maybe it's old money, you know. You've not just come into resources recently, and so you have a whole vault to be able to wedge, um, you know, to your advantage in terms of getting a leadership position. And from the life of Abimelech, I would like to submit to us, you do not need to think of yourself less because you have comparative advantage, because you have height, because you have stature. Perhaps you have voice, but those things all need to be yielded to God. All those things need to be exercised knowing that promotion, a verse that I like from the Psalms, promotion cometh not from the east, nor from the west, nor from the north, nor from the south or the desert areas. God is judge. He brings on up and brings another down. Maybe you don't have what the others have who are on the you know, the playing field to become leaders. If God has chosen you, God has chosen you. Maybe what you think is a disadvantage to you, that you come from a humble background, may be a comparative advantage because uh, people see that this is the kind of leader who understands things of, of us people on the ground. Each one of us has a comparative advantage. And like Abimelech, it is what has brought you to prominence. But remember to exercise it under the jurisdiction of the Lordship of Christ. Ephesians 2.10 tells us something very interesting, that we are God's workmanship, created in Christ for good works, that we may walk in them. Realize all your education, all your resources, all your nature, all your nurture, all that is a comparative advantage. If you have the Shechemites behind you, it's a comparative advantage. But don't rest on it. Rest on the Lord. The shepherd's heart. Welcome to the shepherd's heart and today do I have a guest. <laughs> this is Philip Waku Sama. Sometimes we call him Waku Winter, Waku Autumn, Waku Spring <laughs> and um, he is has been one of our youth here at the church. Um, he was also one of the youth leaders uh, and active in SITAM 
and then he fell in love with this Nairobi Baptist girl, and uh, so this became his home. You got married just recently. How, how many months? Uh, it's now four months. I got wow. married in December. Wow. Wow. Yes. You're a married man. A married man, finally. <laughs> <laughs> He's also been involved here in our drama ministries yes. and different aspects of, uh, of our youth. And he's somebody that we really appreciate. And I wanted to find out, what, what do you think about leadership, Wakusama? And what do you think in particular about um, the comparative advantaged leader? Welcome. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, as he said, my name is Philip. And um, I think we can... I think it's a good thing that everyone has a comparative advantage, as you said earlier, you know. Uh -huh. And I think that we can actually use that to our advantage in whatever fields we are. Say it's pastoring, mm -hmm. say it's art, say it's, you know, design or architecture or being a doctor, you know. Mm -hmm. I feel like those things lie hand in hand with your talents mm -hmm. and it can actually help you even become a better person in whatever aspect, you know, God has placed you in. Yeah. So in the story of Abimelech becoming king, mm -hmm. I think it was a good advantage for him, you know, being a relative, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think for that reason, you know, he had that and he got, he got to become the king. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a question for you. Okay. Okay, Shoot. if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. So you said uh, a name, a well-known name can be a comparative advantage, you know, yeah. and it could be anything, you know, mm -hmm. to gold or, or old money or, you know, talents or anything yeah. of the sort. Yeah. And Proverbs... Um, 22 says a good name is better than riches, okay? Mm -hmm. So my question to you would be, how would you rest on the Lord and still rely on your comparative advantage okay. in your day-to-day -day work? Okay. A good name, you said a good name? Is better than riches. Is better than riches yeah. from the Proverbs. Yeah. Um, you, you see, one thing that a leader must do is really their devotional life. Mm -hmm. We're looking at the judges and then it's going to transition into kings. But one of the things that was required of the kings when they were put into power was to handwrite the law themselves. Okay. And that way they became very familiar, very intimate with the word of God okay. that was available. So that as they exercised the powers of leadership and the gifts and talents that they had in leadership, they would do it from a prism of the word of God. And so not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. That's a Zechariah verse in the Old Testament mm -hmm. that colors how any leader should use their comparative advantage. And so if you have a name, you know, um, just tell you. So when I grew up, okay. we lived in a very small town. Um, it's, it's, it's now grown a little more. I, I, I wouldn't say it. <laughs> and it was at the back of beyond of Kenya. Okay. But in that small town of population of 200 people, or give or take, my dad was the civil servant, the most high-ranking civil servant there, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, sub-chief, headman, sub-chief, yeah. chief, you know. Yeah. And, and the name Mulandi, there was, no, there was no doubt. If you said you're Mulandi, there was only one Mulandi in town. Yeah. And the Mulandi in town, although it was like a small village, was the name. Yeah. Now, how do you exercise leadership in such a situation? you realize that everything that God has given you, including that good, and, th and the good thing is that dad had a good name in terms of the development and in terms of integrity. By God's grace, he had, he had done his leadership well. Mm -hmm. And so for us to be able to come and use that name and, and, and still rely on God, it meant realizing first, this comparative advantage came from the Lord. Yeah. Secondly, this comparative advantage has not been given to everybody. So it's been given to me to make provision for everybody. So it might, it might, you know, propel me upwards, but it is for the purpose of gaining what is in the clouds because of where the, the name has taken you to bring down rain that cascades to everybody. Okay. So that's, that's what I think. Okay, mm. interesting. And so about comparative advantage, I'm yeah. sure it varies from different person to different person. Would you say it's fair to compare your comparative advantage with someone so that you can possibly you know, give yourself, um, let's say, an advantage or, you know, maybe help improve yourself, for lack of a better word. I don't know how to put that clearly. Say um, we're, we're both artists, for example. We can both draw properly, okay? okay. But you can draw better than me. Yeah. So would you say it would be good for me to compare myself with you so that I can learn from you, so that I can improve my comparative advantage? 
that's that's a tricky question, but I'm not surprised. This is not out of character for Philo to ask such kind of questions. <laughs> I think one, uh-huh. the Bible tells us, as iron sharpens iron, one, one man sharpens, sharpens another. another. Yeah. When iron is sharpening iron, yeah. it's not there's there's some generation of heat, yeah. but there's a clear focus so that when both of us leave, we are sharper. Okay. And so there's a sense in <coughs> which comparing our, our different comparative advantages helps us. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, there are, there are people that I surround myself with that are gifted in areas that I could never touch. But I am always placing myself with them so that I improve in my weakness, but also so that I appreciate my comparative advantage and give it my full push mm-hmm. as I give avenue mm-hmm. for them to give their full pu- okay. push in their gifting. Yeah. And I facilitate for their gifting. Okay. However, you have to be careful because any, <laughs> any comparison is a very dangerous indoor sport because it naturally lends you to feel less of yourself. You know, because grass is always greener on the other side. And sometimes it's because the other person has just painted the grass green. <laughs> and here you are, you know, comparing, you, you know, your grass, which is natural, and his, which is painted. painted yeah. So I would say work on your gift, work on appreciating others' gifts, and then as you see other people's gifts, see what areas of yours you can improve. You may only improve yours from 0.5 to 1.5 by looking at somebody who has a 9.0. The other, the other uh, thing I'd like to say about this, do you know that proverb that says, do you see a man skilled in what he does? Yeah. He will not serve in obscurity. He will serve before Among kings. kings you know? yeah. And so the gift makes way for the person. So for example, I'm, I'm a leader here, but I'm leader number nine. And all the other senior pastors before me have had some tremendous gifts. And so it's easy to come into this office and be intimidated that I have no comparative advantage. No, mm-hmm. I do. I have the comparative advantage of not having the gifts that my predecessors <laughs> had. So one, I try to build on their foundation. Okay. So don't try to destroy whatever they made because yeah. they were able to build that because of that gift. If yeah. you destroy it, you can't make it. Yeah. So you keep what they built as intact. But then now you build on that okay. using your gift. You see, so for example, one of my gifts is hospitality. I True. enjoy <laughs> cooking. I enjoy having people over. And so if you came into my office, you'd see all you know, the libraries of my predecessors. I have not ha- added to that library even one, <laughs> even one full scap. You know? But if you come into my office because of this other gift, then you find these food, there is a drink, mm. there is a fridge, you know, just because I want to use my gift mm. to build on the other's comparative advantage. Yeah, that makes sense. That's right. <laughs>